On this channel, I might only talk about one football game, but for the past 20 years, I've been playing all three. I'm sure you've noticed it. FIFA, PES and Football Manager have all got worse compared to what they were putting out over a decade ago. Depending on who you ask, they'll say the golden era of football games was probably in the late 2000s. You had PES 6, FIFA 09, Football Manager 2010. These were all total classics and probably the highest point of each series. Personally, I agree with them. I think football games peak somewhere between 2006 and 2012, and I'll get into why those years are important in today's video. But to show you why this entire genre is in decline, we'll look at all three franchises, starting with FIFA. EA Sports, it's in the game. How many thousands of times has the average FIFA player heard that introduction? In every FIFA game from FIFA 93 all the way to FIFA 16, every time you booted up the game to play Ultimate Team, Career Mode, Friendlies, Online, no matter what it was, you heard that sound. When people think about football games, the chances are they're thinking about FIFA. It's the game that's been played by the most amount of people, with over 300 million games sold in the FIFA franchise. This means it's one of the only few that can compete with the likes of Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto. That just shows how big this series really is. Looking back at FIFA 09, career mode was still called manager mode. It was Ultimate Team's first year on the game, and honestly, the majority of modern FIFA's features were already added into FIFA 09. Listen to this example of Ultimate Team and tell me it isn't exactly how it still works. Hi there, and welcome to FIFA 09 Ultimate Team, a brand new game that allows you to play football like never before. Each time you play a game, you learn coins that you can use to buy packs. When you get a player in a pack, that player is then available to play in your ultimate team for as long as his contract is valid. The fact there was even a tutorial made for ultimate team shows how much more complicated it was compared to all the other modes in the game. If you wanted to play kickoff, all you needed to do was pick two teams and play a match. Career mode had no cutscenes, tactics were just a few different settings and signing a player only needed three different values to be selected. The entire game was very simple, but everything worked exactly as it should. Online existed, but it was simply play a game with someone else over the internet. You can see why so many people got into the game in these years. Between 2008 and 2012, FIFA was undoubtedly the best football game on the market. Even if it was your first football game ever, you could master all of the features, fully explore every single mode in a couple of months, and then from then on, it was all about getting better at the game and optimizing your gameplay to be more fun. While older FIFA games had a classic simplicity, modern FIFA has a ton of pointless complexity that is designed to keep you coming back. The constant fear of missing out on the latest Ultimate Team promo drives people to play a game mode they don't even enjoy, and also restricts the amount of time other people will spend on other, more fun game modes. You just have to look at the features that were in older versions of career mode. Stadium customization, creation center, and FIFA lounge. These are three features that people are still begging to return over a decade after they were removed. Any kind of customization still in the game is either thanks to it being added to ultimate team or due to it still being a leftover relic from the early 2000s. There's still some good things going on with FIFA, don't get me wrong. I think FIFA 23 has the most balanced gameplay for over a decade, but I'm not sure I'd say it's more enjoyable than some of these early FIFAs. You can get some immersion from cutscenes being added, but after you've seen them three times, you'll probably be skipping them for the rest of the year. I can't help associate the rise of Ultimate Team with the downfall of not only FIFA, but all football games. Everything EA is doing is directing you to the store and the FIFA points tab. You get untradeable packs, you get tedious objective rewards that take weeks to complete, overpriced squad building challenges, forcing competitive play down your throat, and if you do do it, you get bad rewards anyway. If you want to see how good football games can be when focusing on creating an enjoyable product with no microtransactions, PES 6 is the perfect example. The PES series was the king of football games from PES 4 in 2005 until PES 6 in 2007. It was full of personality and quirks. Real Mini wasn't used in Master League, instead it was a fake credit system. If you budgeted these credits wrong, you'd be fired with no way of changing jobs. It was a really hardcore experience. Players would develop in fairly realistic ways thanks to each stat having its own experience bar. Older players would still increase their mental stats, while their physical stats would slowly decrease. Every system in the game was balanced around not letting you create a team of 99 rated players, but instead a realistically rated team with a few superstars that you could play endlessly thanks to their endless career mode. 
Another quirk was the generated players. Castolo, Odo, Espimas. This team of fake players is loved by everyone. Anyone who ever decided to create their own team back in the mid 2000s will have experiences with these guys. Their stats were awful, but each player was good at one thing. Castolo was the fastest player on the team, but also had a bit of finishing. Dodo was a hard tackling but slow midfielder, and Espimas could develop into a top central mid with big stamina and shot power. If you can't tell, I grew up playing endless hours of Master League. It wasn't only Master League that made PES 6 one of the best football games of all time. The PES 4 to PES 6 era of gameplay on the pitch was leagues above anything else out there at the time. It would only be beaten by FIFA 09 coming out nearly 5 years after PES 4. Sure, the games had their issues, there were only 5 leagues you could pick teams from, with another league made up of random teams from all around Europe, but it didn't matter because the entire game was focused around having fun playing football. No matter what team, no matter what style of football you wanted to play, it was enjoyable on PES 6. I think this is something that's missing on the more modern, competitive versions of both PES and FIFA. The big drive to remove any kind of randomness and replace it with hardcore skills and make it a bit more like an esports really has killed the fun part of the game, and I think it's something that really does need to change going forwards. In my opinion, it's slightly unfair to even associate PES and eFootball. To me, the PES series died in 2021 with the name change. Even then, the decline of PES really did start in 2008. PES 2008 was everything wrong with the series. It was still using 8 directions of movement from 1990 until 2010, and the series only got worse from the move across console generations. It's surprising how fast the decline was. PES 6 was the best game in the series, but it was followed by the two worst, the unresponsive PES 2008 and the unremarkable PES 2009. There was a bit of improvement from 2010 until about 2016, but as the pressure to add an online competitive mode increased, things started to decline once again. Master League Online was probably the best solution to this problem. The game was an adapted version of the famous PES career mode, with players increasing or decreasing in value based on how many people owned them. I remember purchasing a young ander like Lukaku on day one, and by the end of the first season, he was worth triple what I paid online. The slow build-up and lack of packs meant you had to play the matches, win tournaments, sell players at their highest value to improve your team. Sadly, this mode only lasted until 2015, where it was replaced with my club. The biggest issue from modern PES comes from the competition in the game market. The more polished FIFA has more features in both career mode and ultimate team, gameplay is slower, so less people enjoy it, and the personality of the early games has been fully ripped out of the game. The lack of funding from Konami and the lack of purchases from football fans resulted in a free-to-play mobile game that got sadly ported to consoles a few years ago. The gameplay is no longer fun, the graphics don't even come close to competing with FIFA, and Master League has been fully removed with no timeline for its re-edition. It seems like Konami have settled for being second best, which I think will just result in them falling behind even more. The way the early PES games feel is very unique, but modern PES is soulless and bland, which I think is the real tragedy on the future of the PES series. Oh, superb from Alcacer! And with that goal comes comfort! Now it's time for the toughest part of the video. Football Manager is a hard one to judge. It's hard to say if the game's declined. In fact, most of the parts of the game are actually improved since 2012, as you would expect. However, the improvements are so small that if there was any kind of rival, we would probably be seeing a Pez-like drop-off. If we look at FM 2009, compared to the last Championship Manager game in 2005, there are actually a bunch of improvements. Even compared to the previous year, 2008, they added a 3D match engine. They added some press conferences for the first time, despite them being boring today, they were very interesting at the time. Players were given traits to make them a bit more unique, and player ratings moved from 1 to 10 to having decimal points, so you could be a 6.5. These changes made FM 2009 a massive improvement on the previous year. However, if you've played FM for more than a decade, think back to your favourite game. I'd say the chances are it was probably released between 2010 and 2017. Newer games have barely changed since that period. It's an easy target to mention regen faces, but they do actually play a big part of the game after season 1. Let's have a look at them in 2009. And now let's go forward a full decade to FM 2019. Would you say that's a full decade of graphical improvements? Because I'm not sure that I would. Elsewhere, there's been no real major features added. 
Scouting got more complicated, but largely it works the same way, just with a bunch more clicks. Tactics changed from number systems to roles, which makes it easier to learn, but it is, again, very similar in the way that it works. Training, set pieces, and transfers are exactly the same, just with a few options or clauses being added here and there. Thankfully, Sports Interactive hasn't gone the same route as Kudami. There's no pack-based online game mode here, despite it probably fitting FM a bit more than Pez's Master League Online. The core aspects of the game are still super fun. In fact, while writing this script, I had my Journeyman Rail Betis career mode open on my second monitor. But looking back, you can only imagine how much better the game could be if they did develop it as much as they did FM 2009. With the game being so advanced, I think any competitor would have to spend years just to get level with Football Manager. This is why I doubt we'll get a true competitor anytime soon, despite FIFA Manager having features in 2006 that people want in Football Manager today. Recently, squad planning was added to Football Manager 23 as a big main feature, but it was a feature that was in FIFA Manager 14. Guess what? So was the squad hierarchy screen, a big feature back in FM20, the training session planner, which was in FM21, and the team dynamics, which was in FM19. Hopefully the youth camps feature could be added soon, that would allow you to recruit foreign players without having to find a good affiliate in that nation, and of course the academy is always a big part of everyone who plays Football Manager's career mode. The last area we can really compare is on the pitch action, so let's quickly watch some FIFA Manager gameplay and compare it to what FM23 looks like. Keep in mind that one of these videos is from 2014 and the other is 9 years later in 2023. Now I'm not expecting to get fully photorealistic graphics on Football Manager, but it would be nice to finally get an upgrade on that 3D engine that seems like it hasn't changed since 2017. Hopefully that's something that can come very, very soon. If you're a big football fan, let me know what you think's gone wrong with football games recently. I'd love to hear what you guys think, so make sure you comment it down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more football game content, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and why don't you share it with someone who you think would really enjoy watching this. Why don't you let me know what things you wish every game could improve in the comments below as well. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you soon, cheers and goodbye.